Hey everyone, welcome back to the Ticket Break Gaming Podcast. Um, if you're new here, this is a podcast totally unscripted where me, Jason, and Trevor talk about just things that we want to talk about. Um, d- some gaming stuff, some stuff we enjoy. And anyway, let's just get started. So, uh, what? I was going to say, I think loosely scripted is a better way to put it. Yes, we have topics, we just don't plan the entire conversation out. So, uh, first, before those, let's, uh, what have we all been playing? Jason, let's start with you. You been playing anything lately? I have been playing Jump Force, and even though it's been getting very shit on, apparently, I haven't <laughs> looked up reviews because I don't really care, mm-hmm. but I was told that it's doing very poorly critically, but I don't care because I find it really fucking fun. Yeah, you actually, <clears throat> like, we didn't record this yet, we're going to, but the three of us have played that game, and my, honestly, yeah. <laughs> I honestly, I do like it, it's a lot of fun. I will say it's very, visually, it's very jarring and confusing because of how fast it is, how many, like, uh, particle effects there are. The thing I don't like is Trevor has the same complaint, I agree. There needs to be a dub for the voices, and I don't like how the characters don't have alternative skins because there was a time we were playing where me and Trevor... Oh, yeah, that was annoying Yeah, shit. where me and Trevor were playing, we both picked Sasuke, and I couldn't fucking tell who was who. I was like, am I hitting you or are you hitting me? What's going on? <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> that happens to me in games even when I'm a different character than my opponent. I'll just lose complete track and somehow forget who I am. Dude, for some reason, like, when I play Smash Bros, I lose track of my character, and I'll, like, realize, like, ha- right before I die that I'm off the side of the screen. It's like, oh, shit, I'm over there! That is actually something I've been hearing a lot of people say. Yeah, with really? To Ultimate. Yeah, a lot, yeah, I've heard a lot of people say with Ultimate that for... Ultimate, above any other Smash game, for some reason, people very easily lose track of their character. Okay, good. It's not just me. I'm not stupid. That's good. Yeah. It's mainly in matches with three or more people, though. Gotcha. Uh, Trevor, what about you? What have you been playing? Oh, actually, I want to talk a little bit about Jump Force. Right okay, there. yeah, go ahead. Ooh, somebody's Ooh. excited. Okay, so... <laughs> um, Trevor just hardened. What? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we, 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 so. we just got done playing uh, Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, and we evolved our Metapods, so we've been making a lot of hardened jokes. Um... <laughs> It really just sounded like you just said we evolved our menopause. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. What, what the evolution did that be? <laughs> I love, um, honestly with that game I was skeptical if I would even like it, like at all, but like literally playing it true, alcohol may have also, also been, a, been a thing, but like I love playing it, playing especially as Deku, even though I, for I could tell he's terrible in the game, but it's so much fun to land a Detroit Smash and yelling it out with him in hardcore Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I, Trevor I, really knows how to utilize Midoriya, and I feel like that doesn't seem easy because he seems like a very sluggish character. He's also oh, he really ins- slow. He's he's shit. also really insane with Sasuke. You're really good with Sasuke. Oh yeah, yeah. I forgot about Sasuke. Who's on the complete opposite spectrum of <laughs> yeah. Midoriya? I think my best character so far would be Sanji. I'm also really good with Sabo, I think. But yeah, uh, Jason, are there any other games you've been playing? Um. Not at the moment, but I did have more to say about Jump Force. What's that? Too. Just because you guys were talking about your best characters. Yeah. I feel like my best character, obviously, is my custom character, just due to... When, you, when you're when you able to customize your own moves and, play, and you play through your custom character throughout the story, you really get to a feel for how the moves work with your character. Oh, so yeah. I feel like my, my custom character is my best. And I've had a couple different builds and appearances for him, and I don't have this build now, but when I played with Tre- uh, Trevor and Dylan... My favorite build that I had was entirely lightning based. Nice. And it was so much fun to play as. I don't know why. Lightning is like my favorite elemental type in a lot of fighting games. Yeah, that's cool, man. And also my second favorite character, if not like or not uh second best and favorite character in the game so far, if not even second, maybe even tied with my first, but is Ryu Seba. Just because he's just a dude with a gun in this completely out of place among the cast of characters. I fucking hate fighting and, <laughs> against him. It pisses me off. Because you can, like, dodge and shoot at the same time. Yeah, it's like annoying. One of, one of like the specials used... is, a do- is, a, is a quick shot that you can move in any direction while you fire or just stand still. And is um, another one of his specials is a, a double shot where he can't move while he does it. But if someone's blocking, the first shot breaks their guard. And then he automatically fires a, sh- a second shot that does... A slight amount of damage. Yeah. I, because of him using that damn guy, that's how I learned I was good with Sasuke. Because I, <laughs> like, he would just, like, be a ranger, like, okay, I'm gonna fucking use my Mangekyo, bitch. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, you mean your Amaterasu? Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Same thing, Dylan. No, it's not. No, it's not. Mon- oh, wait, no, you're right. Mangekyo is the eye. <laughs> yes! Amaterasu yeah. is the black fire. I was thinking of the illusion. Tsukiyomi, that's what it's Suk- fucking called. Yeah. It's Suk. Actually, it's weird because I-, I was watching Naruto recently 
And if you look it up, it's Sukuyomi, and it's based off, like, a particular deity. Yeah, and it's, it's like a Japanese And it's spelled Sukuyomi, guy. but I swear the subtitle, and the reason I used to, I used to think it was called this, because I, I used to sound like this, and the subtitle used to say it, I swear, it's a Sukiyomi for some reason, even Su- though it's Sukuyomi. Oh, really? That's weird. Yeah, it's weird. I feel like in, when I used to watch the English dub, they used to say Sukiyomi. Okay. And when I was watching it recently, even when I was watching it in Japanese, the subtitle said Sukiyomi and not Sukuyomi. Yeah, which that is, is really weird. weird. Okay, so Jason, was there anything else you've been playing, or is there more you want to talk about with Jump Force? Um, I don't th- think there's other stuff I had to mention about Jump Force. Have you been playing anything else? And I, I don't, not that I recall. I, I, I've been Jump Force is what I've been playing mostly, and I haven't played it in several days. I've been kind of taking a brief break because I've been playing it with friends pretty often. Nice, nice. But um, yeah. That's, That's cool, it. man. Yeah. What about you, Trevor? What have you been playing lately? Uh, last night, because I couldn't sleep, I just thought, I said, fuck it, and played a little bit of Titanfall 2 campaign. I saw that. I was on Xbox last night. I saw you playing that. How do you like it, man? Um, there was this one joke where the, uh, ti- the Titan is actually a little bit like a person. Yeah. And, like, there was this one point wherever he was, like, he was talking about this gun that I just picked up, and he was just, like, like saying so much stuff about it. Mm-hmm. And it was, like, and one of the options, you could you get to choose, like, what you get to say. So one of the options, uh, I said, like, hey, it sounds like you're a love BT. And he says, love requires this, 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 and this. And, like, one that was, like, admiration, compassion. Conclusion, I am 50% in love. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, Titanfall 2 is such a good game, but it did not get as much attention as it deserved because I think it came out around the same time Black o- or Call of it Duty and... Be- um, yeah, it came in between Battlefield 1 and the newest Call of Duty. I didn't yeah, know which Call of yeah. Duty. Yeah, <laughs> I honestly hope... My hope for this is that because the creators of Titanfall release Apex Legends and that's actually getting a lot of popularity, I am hope that'll make people go to Titanfall 2 because that game was amazing and it deserved more attention, you know? Plus, they are going to be making the next Star Wars game, so hopefully that will not be shit. Hopefully it doesn't get cancelled. <laughs> um, <laughs> fucking cancels a fucking solo story uh, Star Wars game, is that right? Open World too, wasn't it? I don't know. Uh, yeah, there was an Open World one that they cancelled uh, because, but they made, it was really going to be, a, originally it was going to be a story game that was going to be short and sweet. And then, but they were like, oh wait, we want this to be Open World. And then they realized, oh shit. Uh, you, the open world takes a long time. Yeah. And then they said, you know what? We're going to cancel this so we can get a short and sweet game. I'm honestly... Look, I'm just going to say this just because I mentioned EA. I am <clears throat> done with them. I did not buy it, but I was hopeful for Anthem, and it's a fucking train wreck. Like, I did not... Okay, I wasn't expecting it to be great, but I, th- what, I didn't think it'd be as bad as it did. Like, they fucked up the loot in a looter shooter. How do you fuck... Like, the one thing you need to get right... <laughs> Like, I'm sorry, I'm going off topic, but, like, I'm, I'm fucking pissed that... I'm actually, I'm loving your passion right I now. I want it, like, 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 legit, like look, so, like, look, genuinely look, frustrated. Like, I'll admit, Destiny 2, when they came out, yeah, they kind of fucked up their loot in the beginning, but it wasn't as bad as Anthems, okay? Dylan, I can hug you right now. I don't, don't, because I'll probably punch you, I'm still thinking about Anthem. <laughs> I wanted to get in a fucking robot suit, pre- pretend I'm Iron Man, fly around, and fuck! Alright, you know what? <laughs> Anyway. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. I was honestly thinking I would have to go back and forth with him on, like, Destiny, but no, he's fully no, on board. No, no, okay, okay. Game. I, I like Destiny. I will... No, I, I was saying, I'm talking about Anthem. I thought... No, I'm not gonna defend that. Anthem, because you, like... Like, look, yeah, look, let's so let's be real. Ludo shooters have a history of not being good when they come out. Division wasn't good when it came out. Destiny 1 and 2 were not good when they came out. I was not expecting Anthem to break this trend. I was hoping that they would at least be good enough to get people. But, like, fucking, like, you fuck up the loot! That's, that's, what the hell? That's so rough to think that you have an entire genre of games that have such a bad history that when a new one comes out, you don't even hope it's good. You just hope it's good enough. The problem is, like... That's sad. The problem is, like... (laughs) that's his favorite genre, too, probably. Well, okay, okay. The (laughs) problem is, like, with Anthem, is that it's gonna be a games as a service, which is a game where, like, it's a hot... You play as a hobby to come back to it over and over again. But you still need to have a good first impression. That's why it's important you get it right the first time and not be like, oh, don't worry, it'll get better over time. I, like I said, I do like it when games have content. I'm looking forward to stuff coming in Destiny 2. But still, Destiny 2 and, you know, Anthem did not do a good first impression. And fuck, it, I'm just really disappointed in that. What were you going to say? I think there's like, 
an actual term among fans for that co- like that type of game design where they release it broken and very obviously unfinished and do th- and just patch it over an extended yeah. of time. I think it's called the finish it later philosophy. <laughs> yeah, that that sounds accurate. Anyway, enough of the my- fan term for it. I mean, okay, I actually like that. Anyway, enough of my little rant. Uh, Trevor, did you have any more you wanted to add? Oh no, I'm just I've been having a little bit of fun Titanfall Titan too. Yeah, man, it's a what fun. Have you been playing? It's a really fun game. Uh, okay, so. What have I been playing? Well, uh, earlier today, as of this recording, Trevor and I just recorded more Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. Oh, yes, I've been playing uh, that, too. Um, we played that. <laughs> yeah, he technically was there for that. That is a lot of fun. I'm, I'm honestly really enjoying that. Um, you'll definitely see the video soon. Um, but, yeah, that, that Pokemon, it's very casual, but it's helping me get back into playing Pokemon because I dropped off that a long time ago. But now I'm starting to want to get back into it for the, to make videos of it, and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee is definitely helping with that. What's up, Trevor? Also, just, like, our reactions together when we see a rare Pokemon. So, fucking, we were, like, literally when we started the recording, I'm like, man, I wish I had a fire type. And then we found a fucking Charmander. And we're going for, like, <laughs> like get it! Get like, it! Yeah, get the Charmander! And he, so, like, like, you're surrounded by a bunch of other Pokemon. We're like, fuck this! <laughs> yeah, and then, no, we also mentioned, like, I would love to have a Geodude, or I would love to have an Onyx. We found both. Damn. Yeah, like, we, like this game is giving us I, what we want. You know, he still wants a Squirtle. We I, haven't I, found a Squirtle yet. I like to think your actual Nintendo console is just recording your conversations and the RNG is based off of your conversation. That topics. is like some new Can level technology shit. <laughs> 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 well, you said it. Yeah, all right. But, um, yeah, we've been playing... We, early on... If you get Mewtwo the next time you play, that'll actually be really creepy. <laughs> as a random, oh, that's that's glitchy as shit. I'm, I, I might yeah. burn that. Actually, no, it's nice to me. No, I'll be nice. To uh, me. <laughs> but yeah, other than Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, I've also been playing Kingdom Hearts three. I, I, okay, so I've been loving Kingdom Hearts three ever since it came out. It's not perfect. I would give it a nine out of ten, but it is still amazing. My only problem, like and this, is not a problem with the game, just me personally, is that. Everyone, um, all everyone on on the internet and all my friends have already finished the game, and I'm recording it as I play. So, and I only get to play it like once a week because that's when I get to record. So, everyone's like, everyone's all like, "Oh, the ending was crazy. The ending was amazing." And I'm like, "I'm still in fucking Kingdom of Corona. Give me a goddamn minute, all right? Don't say <laughs> shit." For the record, Kingdom of the Corona, if you don't know, is tangled. Uh, Jason, what do you want? What are you saying? Oh, yeah. When you, when you said, I forgot for a second. When you said you'd give it a 9 out of 10, it immediately made me think that, like, I I can't do, like, ratings on a scale of 1 to 10 because I'm either way too harsh with what I'm rating or way too generous. I have no in-between. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't like the whole 1 through 10 rating. I like the whole, should you buy it, should you try it, should you play it, that kind of thing. Because yeah. I feel like that's more of a recommendation, like a straightforward recommendation. But, um, yeah, no, I'm loving Kingdom Hearts 3 so far. I just wish I could play it more, but I'm trying to, like, re- play when I record it so my reactions are more genuine. Um, other than that, what I just mentioned earlier, I actually got back... I- I've been playing Destiny 2. I took a little bit of a break from that, but then I got back into it last night. I was playing that till like, 2 in the morning last night. Damn. Um, I got the fucking Orpheus rigs finally, which is a really good exotic for uh, Night Stalker Hunters. For those of you who don't know, what it does is... You, you have you tried Destiny 2 out yet, Jason? No. Okay, you need to do that. How long have we owned it, Jason? Yeah, he, no, Trevor. <laughs> Trevor, that's not important. All right, we're actually, gonna... you know what? I am being a hypocrite right now. You really? I don't know how many games I have. That I yeah. Know. So, Trevor, I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain this to you. I'm you, sorry, Jason. It's fine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain this to you because I know you'll get it. So, the Orpheus rigs are exotic boots you get for your hunter. Okay. Do you remember Night Stalker Hunter, the arrow yes. for the tether? So, what the Orpheus rigs does is for every enemy you tether that like gets hit. It, you get super energy back oh shit you can literally like get it like immediately after and just keep doing it it is so much fun i love it that sounds ridiculous it's g- fucking amazing um but yeah that's that's mainly what i've been playing um other than that um in destiny 2 um i've been working on uh getting the uh breakneck which is a pinnacle weapon for gambit um i'm gonna think again work on getting the loaded question which is a pinnacle weapon for strikes because uh, season six is about to start, which is when the um, Joker's Wild expansion comes out, and that's probably when those are going to be gone. Um, also, something I want to mention about Destiny Two that I want to mention, you Trevor, that's coming in Joker's Wild, because this is interesting to me, but I don't know what it is. They haven't really released any details about it. You remember Zer, the guy that sells yeah. exotics? They're adding, they're giving him bounties. There's going to be Zer bounties. Oh, that actually sounds kind of fun. I know. I don't know what they are though. Like I don't know how they're going to work. 
but I hope it's... I'm thinking even if they even they don't give exotics, they will give legendary shards, and then you can use this to buy exotics. That would be good, yeah. I, I definitely think, other than the Zerb bounties, they need to update Zerb, because all he does is sell exotics from year one. None of the Forsaken exotics, as of now, you can get from uh, Zerb. So yeah, that kind of sucks. Yeah, they need to update him. Um, I'm not saying not sell the year one coins because I have barely, no, I yeah. think I only have like three exotics in the entire game. Yeah, no, <laughs> I I have, I have a few exotics, but I think most of them are year one. I don't even know if I have any Forsaken exotics right now. Well, I guess Ace of Spades counts, but you get that from a quest. Anyway, um, okay, enough of that. That's what we've all been playing. Now, let's talk about what we've all really want to talk about. Trevor does, and Trevor more than anyone here wants to talk about. Yes. We just watched the brand new Nintendo Direct for Pokemon. Yes. Uh, Pokemon, the name of the game is Pokemon Sword and Shield, which is good because when before we saw this, there was actually a leak I saw where the, it showed the logos, but it was called Pokemon King and Queen. I thought, that is not a good name, and I don't like those logos. I think Pokemon Sword and Shield is a lot better of a name. What do you guys think? Watch them actually change it because of the, uh, the feedback on King and Queen. Oh god damn. Um, <laughs> I was I was gonna say like I just I don't know why this pops in my head, but what if like the next game after this, Pokemon just decided to get like super edgy and they're like Pokemon Gods and Pokemon Devils or some shit. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? I, in a weird way I could probably see that happening. I think they already did with Gale of Darkness. D That's not They didn't have a counterpart though. Yeah. That title, that title yeah. is very edgy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gale of Darkness was a good Dude, game. Though. Even like the cover art for that game, see in alongside the title just made it seem very edgy yeah. yeah although i did want to play it when i was younger and i never got to play it well i haven't and we will play it on the channel soon along with pokemon coliseum look forward to that folks <laughs> um but anyway yeah so the name of the game is pokemon sword and shield it takes place in the gala region which um anything you guys want to add on about that because i don't know what to say about that uh i think it's from the map it looks like it's a very uh it looks kind of like, uh, you know how Sinnoh was as a region where it was basically like very radical changes throughout this thing? Yeah. It looks like it's going to be like that too. Yeah. Like, like it's going to be, you know, south to yeah. north and is the, nor you know, the higher you the go, north it's going to be like very cold over yeah. here. And then instead of being, I don't think it's going to be as seasonal where basically there's some Pokemon games where it, there was nowhere that was, you know, it basically yeah. the entire region was one, uh, how do I say it? Like one season. Yeah. At the, all at the same time. So, like, let's okay. say, okay, this is autumn time now. Oh, yeah. this is winter time. No, it looks like it's more of, okay, we're going to have it be... You know how to say this. You, yeah. Sorry. You finish your point? Basically, it looks like there's... It's going to be, like, the same area is going to say the same season, but there's going to be, you know, variety throughout the region. Oh, yeah. From what it looked like to me... I only just now retroactively thought about this, but the industrial district in that game... Just, it looks really industrial, like very old-fashioned industrial. Yeah, and it, it does. it kind of reminds me of a less dirty version of the industrial district from Fable. Yeah, I can actually see that. So, some of the locations they show, like, there's a lot of variety. There's definitely, like, a snowy mountain area. There's, a like, a village and, like, a grassy area, like a like a valley. There's a fucking mine that looks beautiful. It's, like, gems dousing on the Dude, wall. that mine looks so beautiful. There was a, there was a city, I think this might have been the industrial area you're talking about, but I... But I could be wrong. But there was, like, a city where the character's walking through, and there's got, like, waterways on the ground. That reminded me of the fucking... I don't remember the name of the city, but did you guys ever see the Pokemon movie with, um, Latios and Latias? Yeah. It I reminded me of name. that. Because how the... Like, how the city had, like, water going there. Oh, yeah. Kind of like, um... What's that city in Italy called? Uh, Venice? Venice? Yes. Th that, it reminded me of that. Which, by the way, that is some place I always wanted to go to. Because, like, I, back in, when I was a child, I played, uh, Sly Cooper 3, and that was a place you could go. And that was a fun level, man. Um, Venice is beautiful. It is, but yeah. What are you gonna say, something, Trevor? Oh, I love Venice. I've been uh, like, I feel like I, if I go went there, I would actually kind of have it recognize like some of the places. Oh yeah, you need to go here to get here, and like people be like, "What the fuck?" I'm like, I played Assassin's Creed two, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, ten times. <laughs> I like to think the landscape would be pretty different now, but it would be funny if that you could if you could actually find your way around Venice yeah. just by playing Assassin's Creed two. There was there was someone who actually did find their way to a certain uh, landmark that was the same in uh, what's it called Brotherhood. Rome. Oh, Rome. Oh, yeah, no. basically they played yeah. uh, they played a lot of Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. And yeah, he actually, told me about this. They actually made they lost their tour guide. They actually found it. Obviously, uh, let me put this grain of salt. 
I did not actually look into the story, so this might someone may have just just said this shit. I realize this now. Yeah. But the according to the story that I read, <laughs> someone basically was like, "Oh yeah, they took a bunch of back alleys and shit, and they went to the where the tour guy, <laughs> where the tour guy was supposed to take them." It's like, how the fuck do you know this? I play Assassin's Creed Brotherhood a lot. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Uh, excuse me. So, uh, moving on. Um, about what they also revealed in the direct, they showed some gameplay and, uh, one. The, I think this detail is a little obvious, but some previous Pokemon games have not done this. There are Pokemons from previous generations. We saw a Hoot Hoot, which was Gen 2. Gen 2. We saw Munchlax, which was Gen 3. Lucario as well. We saw Lucario. Wait, did we see Lucario? Yes, we did see Lucario. I don't remember seeing Lucario. Yes. I'm... Okay, which was Gen... Gen 4. Gen 4. Okay, so there's Gen 2, 3, and 4. Uh, was there a Sparrow in there? Was that something? There was uh, that... Remember that... Uh, what's it called? The um, the, Remember that rabbit thing? The in starter. the beginning, Bunny. yeah, the, like not the fire starter, but oh. the uh, what's it called? The other one that you were like, oh, is that a new Pokemon? Remember this? Oh yeah, I don't that know. Was that... It. that was the Gen Five, I think. I don't know that you're one. You're the Gen Six. I forget which one. Yeah, I, that Pokemon was new to me. I haven't seen that. Yeah. Well, are there? Did you see any Gen One Pokemon? Uh, Pikachu. Oh fuck yeah, that's obvious. I forgot we saw Pikachu. Uh, yeah, yeah so I feel like you expect Bulbasaur, to I see Pikachu. Were I think any... I saw Bulbasaur too. Yeah. Were there any like outside of the starters though? Yeah. Although Pikachu Probably, but start. let's I'll be honest, a lot of those they kinda blend together. Dude, for me, Pikachu for Gen 1. is so relevant that Pikachu might as well be a starter regardless of yeah. the Pikachu. So yeah. Pikachu is just so crucial to that first generation. We of can at least we can at least confirm from what they've shown that they're gonna have Pokemon from generations one to five or six. And this is the eighth generation, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're definitely gonna get a lot of new Pokemon. Actually, but, that's the thing is I don't know if we're gonna get a lot. <clears throat> yeah, that's true. Because uh, it could be, um, like, I think it was uh, Gen uh, 6, actually. I think that one only had, like, about 60 to 80 Pokemon because they focused so much on the previous Pokemon. I don't really know the help of anything about yeah. Pokemon, but from what I do know, I hope that Gen 8 doesn't consist of a lot of miscellaneous objects being Pokemon. Like, oh, yeah. please no more ice cream and chandeliers and fucking keys. Okay, I'm gonna be so, okay. I'm gonna be honest though. I thought chandelier was cool. I will cool. defend it's a that cool design, but Here, it's a weird concept. All right, so having a Pokemon that is a that is a rock, or having a uh, Geodude, 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 or having one that is a Pokeball is okay. Though. Voltorb? Yeah, there is a. Pokeball Pokemon? Yeah, yes. that's fucking gross. Why? Isn't there? A, that's wait. the Gen One Pokemon. I, it's Voltorb. Isn't there a Pokemon oh. that's, like, based off the that Pokedex? Seems, that seems different, though. <laughs> no, but... Because it doesn't was... feel like it's just a Pokeball. It is. I've ne like, I've seen it so many times and never, like, associated it. I was just, oh, that's a Pokeball as a Pokemon. I just, for some reason... I only see it as a ex as an explosive. <laughs> it's well, like it's like dude, what like, they I don't, do, yeah. Like, it's like it's like Midoriya is so crucially known as Deku, but I never see Midoriya as Deku. I just see him as Midoriya. Yeah. I can't even see him as Deku when he's like in like in some sort of hero circumstance. I just only see him as Midoriya. Deku. <laughs> My point though is is that they, Pokemon has been doing the inanimate object thing since day one yeah so that's, i really don't that's true. once again though i feel like rocks aren't as much a miscellaneous object it's still like a natural thing in a game where there's pokemon based on natural elements that, okay that, I'm, go I'm gonna look into gen one real quick you guys continue well okay while he's doing that let's get into the next thing which trevor actually mentioned the new starters which is the only new pokemons they revealed there is Grookey. Grookey's the only cool one okay it's then, adorable and yeah. it's not cool it's adorable so and the other ones look lazy so, there, I said so, it. So, fuck. Okay, so listen. <laughs> Grookey is the new grass type. He is like a, mo a chimp Pokemon, I think he said. Which, I actually like uh, Grookey because monkeys are like one of my favorite animals. So, like, I loved Apom. I love Chimchar, especially Chimchar, because he's fire as well. I, I love Chimchar. Yeah. Um, the fire type, and I like this one too because I'm a biased motherfucker and fire types are best types, is Score Bunny. He's a little uh, fire bunny, which I actually think is adorable. And the water type is Sobble, and I'm going to be honest, I don't like Sobble that much. I don't think, from what I've been hearing, nobody does. Yeah, <laughs> like, That's I, sad. Like, I feel bad I think, for it. Like, I honestly, does. I honestly I do. You like Sobble? Yeah, I no, think it that's looks cute. Looks Dude, you should feel special because I don't dislike it. Like I think they all feel like that. That came out wrong. <laughs> I, think, no, I, mean, like, like, I mean, you should feel happy that you're enjoying it, regardless of other people disliking it. I mean, don't because, get me wrong. Like, I didn't I know that people disliked it until now. Well, I think they all look cute, but like don't, I don't think their designs don't, are particularly don't, interesting. Don't get me look, like really simple. Yeah, they, they, I gotta say they do look very simple. And don't get me wrong, Sobble is cute. It's just. 
Like, didn't they say he was a tadpole Pokemon, or what did they say? No, he, he said it was a lizard. lizard. I think that's kind of yeah. cool. Yeah, he said it was a lizard, which is cool, but he he looks really similar to the fucking starter. The, the, I don't know the name, but the starter that evolves into Greninja. What's that one's name? Uh, I don't remember. Froki? Froki. Don't they look kind of similar? Yeah, they do, actually. Yeah, that's why I'm like, like, what the fuck? Anyway. I so, also would just like to tell you, I just thought of it earlier, but uh, you're wrong for thinking fire is better than lightning. Fuck you, Dylan. <sighs> Trevor, which one? Okay, it, wait. No, this it's, is between us. No, 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 hold on. I need someone with Pokemon knowledge. Is there, what's more effective against each other? Is fire more effective against lightning or is, lightning more, or is it like the same? It's neutral. There is no, you know, special. Okay, fine, fine, all right, fine, fine. Leave a comment Both down below. Both weak against gr ground type, by the way. Shut the fuck up. Actually, sorry, go on. Leave a comment down below if you, which you think is better. If you say fire type, you can. if you say lightning, you can unsubscribe, you son of a bitch. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I actually want people to do this. I want to see which one they think is better. Fire type! Fire type! <laughs> fire. No one's going to say anything we picked. They're just going to say it. You know, what? You know, what? <laughs> you know this is how we decide it. When, we, when this game's come out, I'm going to have a team just lightning types. You're going to have a team just fire types. Deal. But I have to pick my Pokemon. He has to pick his. I'm saying, of course, we would have to okay. have two separate games and you know. Perfect. Now, Trevor, you've been wanting to say something. What is it? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Actually, what I was gonna say was is also another Pokemon from Gen One that's just an ammo object. What's that? Magnemite. I was thinking that earlier. Literally, his first is just a magnet. Yeah. And second, I, I was, second, fuck, second, you're right. And the I was, second one is just three of them. Well, I mean, I was regardless literally, if it's always been around, it doesn't make it any less lazy. I was uh, literally... Was, my point is, though, is you're saying it, you're acting like it's a brand new thing. Like, it's more a recent I, problem. To be I fair, I never said shit. that. I just said, can we stop doing that? I was no. literally <laughs> thinking about men in my earlier. I just didn't know if counted. What the fuck is Diglett? Diglett uh, is just I like don't a think worm. I... Oh, okay. Like, it's a what? It's just basically like a worm. I thought you said a pork grind for a second. <laughs> what? I couldn't fully hear you. Sounded like I don't know. I don't know what happened, but I heard worm as pork grind. <laughs> I was also gonna say this earlier, um, uh, or not earlier. I just literally just thought of this in my head because it. Um, you said Pokemon's enemy out of, enemy out of objects. I don't remember this is the name, but there's a Pokemon. I think his name is Drifblimp or Drifbloom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's literally a Gen fucking. A, also, it's that, literally a fucking balloon. Also, yeah. do you guys have you guys ever read the lore of that Pokemon? Yeah, it yes. like snatches kids away. Yeah, it's fucking terrifying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, have you actually played the game where it's like a, I think there's a little kid near it whenever you're about to get it. Oh fuck! What game was that? Gen four when it came oh, out. Oh, Trevor! I, I have chills. Please wait, don't wait, mention wait, that. I, I haven't heard that before, but that's terrifying. Wasn't that's, that Diamond and Pearl? That, yes. uh, okay. That's that's really fucking scary, and I don't like it. Uh, okay, but anyway, um, yeah. You basically you catch it though. I think you can catch it. Please, please save the children. Jesus Christ! Or you can fetch it. I'm yeah, like legit uncomfortable right now. Like, or, okay, or, so or, or you can use it as your companion to take children. Stop it, Trevor. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Jason, it's okay. It's okay. It's all right. Okay, you're a child, all right. too, so it's all okay. Dude, Stop. I'm 20. No, no, in the game, you're 10. Oh. But I'm 20. Can we stop talking about this? I should not have brought this up. Okay. Getting back oh, to the... scary. Getting back to the... <laughs> All right, let's do it. Getting back, 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 getting back to the fucking man. This video is getting demonetized. Getting back to the fucking no uh, fucking shit. It wouldn't be monetized the first one. Yeah, <laughs> getting back to the fucking starters. So something I just thought of that I want to add is that, well, one, we did not get to see any of the evolution for the stars. We just got to see their base form. Yes. But so I don't no, I don't think every starter has done this in Pokemon. But some starters, when they evolve, they get like an additional type added, like. Torch or Torchic evolved into Kabuskin and then Blaziken yeah, and yeah. then became a fire fighting. I just remembered some that what? I not yeah. remember, but that made me think of something I actually do want to give you credit for. What? Is that fire types have much cooler looking final evolutions than lightning types. Thank you. Thank you. I agree. <laughs> Although okay, so electric types do have some cool ones. Like um what's yeah, the I also I don't I know the, they're uh, called electric types. I just I never think of like I know electricity is what is in a broad cool. sense. So like calling it lightning is limiting it more, but I don't know why. I I just think of the elemental as lightning, even though it's obviously yeah. electricity. Yeah, I was about to say um, I think I was about to say electric type. I think it looks cool, and I think it's the one you just said, Electrifier. Is yeah. that the evolution of um Electabuzz? Hey. Yeah. Yes, I do like that one. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm sorry, Jason. <laughs> you're right. Fire types have cool evolutions like Blaziken, Infernape, Arcanine. Dude. Blaziken. <laughs> Blaziken, I can't believe I forgot to name that. Um, I, no, I think you did. I think Blaziken was the first thing you did named. Did I say Blaziken? Yeah, I think it was the first Blaziken. thing you named. Oh, fuck. I'm dumb. I'm not even paying attention to myself. But anyway, getting back to my point. Uh, yeah, so some evolutions, 
or final evolution of stars getting an additional type added, like blazing and added kind of fighting. Oh, and then uh, I think you told me Incineroar is a dark and fire. Uh, Trevor, so, I are there any other starters that get an additional type when they evolve? Because I can't think of any others than that. Uh, the grass type, I forget the name of it at the time, but Gen 7 becomes Ghost. The, the owl one? Yep. Okay. It's oh, yeah, and uh, Mudkip evolves into a Swamper and gets ground at it, right? Yep, as yeah. well as... Uh, Swamper's a cool one, by the way. What's it called? Empoleon becomes Steel. Empoleon? Yep. Which one's Empoleon? Uh, Piplup. <laughs> oh, Empoleon. yeah! He's, the, Fuck. The He's Steel? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, Dude. you know what's kind of funny, though? What? Steel is weak against fire. Oh, fuck. So he becomes neutral to fire. That's weird. Dude, Pipple was so cute. I loved him. But, um, okay, yeah. I also so, think Empoleon looks really cool. He does. But getting back to what I was going to bring up, what are some additional types you think could be added to these starters? You, Cause it, it, oh, we, you mean, we, like, outside of the main three? I, I thought yes. for a second, I thought you were asking us to come up with our own types, no. elemental types. To no, 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 no. I do want to bring that up later, but... <laughs> but uh, no, 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 because I actually... When we were, we'll get into this later, but when Trevor and I were playing Here's Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, I actually thought of a type that would be kind of cool to add. But anyway, yeah, what are some, what are some types? It's hard to think of because we didn't see what the final evolutions look like, so we don't have an idea. But what do you think they could go with? You know, like, because I think like since the uh, Scorp Bunny is a bunny, and he's like, you know, I could see them maybe adding like, a fighting type to him. <laughs> what? I'm, so, I'm such a fucking nerd. I just thought for a second. When, it, like, my mind through went through this weird process when you were thinking of additional types, I thought to myself for a second, I know there are Pokemon uh, that look like magnets and have, like, similar abilities, but is it its own type, or does it fall under steel? And then from that, I'm like, you know who else has magnet powers? Pain. And I'm like, what if there was a Pokemon that ha had all the powers of the six paths of the Renegon? That would be, like, <laughs> that would be, like, a god Pokemon. Dude, a fucking Pokemon that just, like, is half mechanical and it just pulls a chainsaw out of itself. Oh my god, <laughs> fuck. Alright, but... Dude, you, you know, you remember, there. you know that's a that's a path, like, a, one of the six paths yeah, of the Yeah, and I'm just thinking, like... Up. Dude, I, I I I can I can very inconsistently remember the names of the paths, and I know the Diva path is a... Uh, uh, repulsion and attraction, but I can't remember the name of the path that controls machinery and like robotics. Yeah, it's okay. I'll think of it eventually. But um, yeah, I I think the getting also a path. I think <laughs> getting back to the fucking topic. <laughs> um, yeah, I think the bunny scorpion it could be a fire fighting in his final evolution. I could see Grookey being a grass ground type in his oh, final okay. evolution. And as for a Sobble, um, I don't know. Like what? He's a lizard. So maybe poison? Uh, could be maybe it, it could be poison. It could be dark, possibly. I could see dark. Yeah. What do you, do you guys got any ideas or? Sorry, I zoned out. I, I was thinking of like I was still thinking of a Pokemon with a fucking chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> hey, remember? Hey, remember how you were complaining about Pokemon being inanimate objects? The next Pokemon's a chainsaw. It's a natural <laughs> chainsaw. Fuck it. <laughs> Dude, I wouldn't doubt if that happened eventually. It's just that's too intimidating of a weapon. I feel Dude, for the uh, world of Pokemon. Yeah, like, hold on, yeah, I got the a, drip blooms shit. Hold on, oh, I, yeah. hold on. I gotta bring this. I gotta mention. But they're this like real. subtly scary because of their lore. They don't look scary. I, I gotta mention this real quick because I just thought of this um, with my chainsaw joke. Uh, there was a meme I saw where it's like the creator Pokemon saying like we don't want we we try to make our Pokemon design so little kid friendly and appropriate for kids and then it's just Digimon and one of the Digimons is like just a handgun with arms and legs. <laughs> Seriously? Like, yeah, no, that was a meme I saw, and it's fucking Jeez. hilarious. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, so Jason, do you have any ideas for types you think could be added onto to the starters when they evolve? Give, give me that lightning, or yeah, I was. Gonna... Oh yeah, that would actually be really cool. Grass or which give one? Me that electricity. Uh, like probably like fire and lightning would probably go pretty well. That would be cool. That just made me think of fable. <laughs> that actually would like be combining cool. Combining uh, element types into one thing. I actually would love it if Score Bunny got fire and lightning. If he did, he'd be better than Grookey. So fuck you. Anyway, um, <laughs> wouldn't be cute though. Though like they that one that one Pokemon would get fucking wrecked by ground type because yeah. it's been four times effective. Yeah. So that. if Grookey does end up being a grass ground type, they would you kinda... are orderly. Fucked. Well, fire beats grass. So yeah, they... well, that's times two. Oh, times fuck. four against all right, grass. Uh, all right. I, didn't <laughs> know there, I didn't even know there were multipliers. I didn't either, uses. yeah. Yeah. I, like, I knew, obviously, oh, the okay. multiplier, because that's a whole super effective thing, but yep. I didn't know what they were. Um, but yeah, I getting... put that together until now, actually, until yeah. you said it. Go yeah. on. 
Getting off that, since I mentioned it earlier, and you guys probably don't have ideas, so there should be like a quick thing to... If, if you guys idea, have ideas for this, throw them out there, but this is just going to be really quick. Uh, while Trevor and I were playing Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, I thought of a new additional type they could add to the entirety of Pokemon, because they've done that. They've added fairy types last time. Yeah. An idea I had would be <clears throat> solar types. Like, actual... Like, because dark type is already a thing. <clears throat> Let's make light Pokemon thing, like solar that types. really cool. And they could use that to counter... Uh, dark types and other types as well. Also, gotta keep in mind, uh, Solar Beam is already a thing, so I feel like they should change that type of attack if they add Solar types. <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys have any other ideas for types you could add. What do you guys no, think? No, they, uh, I'm good. Okay, alright. I just want to throw that out there because I think Solar types would be cool. That or, is a really cool idea. Uh, but anyway, continuing with the, with the, uh, Nintendo Direct. Uh, the release date is late 2019, which I think we all saw, all saw coming. Probably November. S probably November. Probably I could... 2020. <laughs> do, do you... No. Nintendo no. delays their games a no, lot, though. No, not Pokemon games. They are always really slow. Yeah. It, it's definitely... I think Charles right. I think it's definitely gonna be November. Oh, yeah. Was, yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, actually, yeah. That yeah. seems to be not the case with Pokemon as much as other games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, That's probably why they did the Let's Go thing as a in-between for people to not be like, where's yeah. the game? Yeah. yeah. So now that you mention it, too, when I think they first announced they were going to be... Actually, no, this applies to uh, this game, so, uh, Sword and Shield, but I remember that... W I don't remember what person it was, but someone working for the developers of Pokemon, were mentioned that they would have a completely new Pokemon Switch game, and they didn't announce anything for it, like a date. They were just like, well, it'll come out when it will come out. Yeah, yeah Which was so, a good idea instead of it, just throwing out a date. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, Pokemon Sword and Shield will be out late 2019. We're definitely going to be playing on the channel. I'm very excited for that. Uh, but they also said more Pokemon to come in late 2019. I don't know what that can yeah. mean, but Trevor has his oh. ideas. So what do you think of this, Trevor? He sounds excited. What okay, is so there's one thing actually. Uh, this is going get, we're into a can't. I'm gonna skip a little bit because you remember how we were originally okay. By the way, guys, we were originally gonna have a topic of top five games for. Why am I talking to the computer? I was thinking. <laughs> I was thinking <laughs> why are you thing? looking at the computer? We're over here. I was I, thinking the same thing, dude. I'm, but I don't like that. Anything. That's the audience to me, my computer. Anyway. <laughs> Hi, audience! <laughs> okay, so, um, what I'm thinking is, we were originally gonna have a topic of, like, top five, I'm looking at the microphone now. <laughs> that works, it's fine. I'm having an idea that, we were gonna have the idea of each of us had five different games, which we want to come to Switch Web. Yes, which is announced. actually what we were gonna switch into next, so I guess we can just use this as a segue. Yep, so, and one of my games was a remaster of Diamond and Pearl with Switch graphics and shit. Ooh, I would like that, but why I don't, do I, but I don't think that's gonna be the next game. I th well, like, I don't think that's gonna be the game that's in 2019, but I think it will be the next one. I think Diamond Master. and Pearl has a high enough demand to be uh, yes. to be remade for I Switch. I Plus, I also, that's literally the next one to be remade because they already remade uh, what's it called? <laughs> they remade uh, Fire Red and Leaf Green for the DS, though. No, that was for Game Boy. Then they did. Oh yeah. Then they did uh, Heart Gold and Soul Silver. That was the next remake. Then okay. The next one after that on the 3DS was the Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, Ruby and Sapphire remake. Next on the block to be remade <coughs> is Diamond and Pearl. Yeah. Okay, that actually would be really cool. I would like to see Diamond and Pearl back on the Switch because I think... Favorite. Plus, I think... Well, no, that's not my favorite. I but think Pearl... That's the one I'm time with. Yeah, I would like to see those remasters, which that would be really cool. And I think Pearl was the last game I played before I dropped off Pokemon. Fun story about me getting Pokemon Pearl. So when they came out, um, I actually learned before I got the games that each Pokemon game has different exclusive Pokemon. Like, even though, like, Pearl and Diamond came out at the same time, but they each had their own Pokemon. <clears throat> One of my favorites from that generation was, uh, Rampardos, the fucking headbutt dinosaur. I fucking love that guy, and he's only a Diamond. I know! So, I think you've heard this story. So, I don't know, I just know where it was going. So, I asked my mom, because this is when I was, like, a little kid, I was like, hey, mom, this is when Christmas was coming up, I was like, mom, can you get me Pokemon Diamond for Christmas, because I want to get fucking Rampardos. She got me, I open, Christmas Day comes up, I open my gift, it's Pokemon Pearl. And I'm like, Mom, I asked for diamonds. It's like, she's like, no, Dylan, they're all the fucking same. I was like, no, they're not! I can't get Rampardos in this shit! They're not the same! They're not the same! You had one job! One job! Also, Dialga is way better. Just say it. Uh, yeah, that's a legendary on the cover, right? Yep. Yeah. I, I think it looks cooler, too. I usually just buy the game for the legendary, not gonna lie. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, how I decide. <laughs> before we, before we get, uh, get into the next part of this podcast, uh, Jason, did you have any ideas for what else they could be bringing at the end of 2019 that they mentioned? 
Dude, I don't know shit about Pokemon. I have yeah. no idea. Ooh, what could they be? <laughs> I, I think... Okay, mm, here's what I think. They could do a... Uh, actually, they could do... Uh, me those Pokemon uh, Mystery Dungeon games. Yeah, that would be cool. That, they could do one of those. They including could. Including all these Sun and Moon Pokemon. I definitely think they could also do maybe DLC for Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu. They could do that, yes. Oh my god, wait, I just thought of this. They could do Let's Go uh, Pokemon Johto. Ooh. Uh, you know, like, car, car gold. Well, they do gold and silver. Let's go. Yeah, I like that. That's I like that. You want? You know what I just thought of? What? Pokemon trading cards on the Switch. I just <laughs> thought. I think that. that would be cool. I wouldn't mind. I actually, I, when I was younger, I tried out the Pokemon card game. It's actually not bad. It's actually kind of fun. I don't know how to play card games. I think they're cool. Like, card games, I think, are cool, especially card games as video games, but I don't know how to play them, and I don't care enough to learn. The thing I learned from my experience is that with card games is you have to kind of give it a, a long chance, because, once, because like, when I started Magic the Gathering, I had to get past that whole learning curve, and once you get past that, and you know car, how cards work and interact, <laughs> you will genuinely have fun. It was the same way when I tried a Hearthstone and Yu-Gi-Oh!, I remember the first time I played uh, Magic the Gathering online. Yeah. I, I, I wrecked Hunter. Yeah. Dude, Hunter <laughs> made a fucking bullshit deck where he literally had like 20 creatures on the field on that game. It was so annoying. I don't know what that means. D the don't even worry about it. The card game I care about is Card Wars. Anyway, be <laughs> the fuck is Card Wars? <laughs> <laughs> Why does that sound familiar? It's from Adventure Time. Oh yeah, that's it. Didn't they make that into a natural card game? Yeah, it's a it's a mobile game, and I don't know. It looks it looks fun. The graphics for the mobile game are actually pretty good. But nice, I nice. think it'd be cool to be remade for console as like a little yeah. small simple game. Yeah. I'll so anyway, getting off that uh, to our next topic, which we kind of started on an accident, is these are games we want on the Switch. As what I mean by want is these are games that have not been announced, have not been revealed to be coming to the switch but we think they'd be cool some of these may be remasters some of these may be brand new titles that are yet to be on the switch but trevor you just said yours your first one was a pokemon pearl and diamond remaster yes okay i like that jason what is yours i What's mean your... I, I'll, i'm gonna go a little out of order just because it's more real, i had an order to mention them in but oh, that's fine his yeah. got me thinking i'm gonna say two of them just because they're along the same topic they're both remasters that's why okay i think I'm just going to say this right now, three games on my list are remasters, so it's fine. <laughs> Every fair. single game is a remaster one on of mine. The other <laughs> game, one of my, the games I have on mine is, isn't, it doesn't, I don't think it would need to be remastered really. I just want it ported. I don't care if it's remastered, but in terms of the actual remasters, Zelda Skyward Sword HD, that's something I really want, and it was rumored briefly, and then I think it was immediately shot down and confirmed not to be true. Thank God. Don't but either way. <laughs> fuck you, Trevor. <laughs> Isn't Skyward Sword the one that, like, nobody likes? Uh, uh, yeah, for some reason. Even Motion though it's controls. fucking great. Dude, I, it's weird. The, the two complaints, like, everyone has about it is that... The motion controls were bad, and it was linear. And one, I didn't care that it was linear. I still felt like the world was interesting despite having a limited path to follow. Yeah, and I... two, the motion controls, like, I don't know how... It, it, it makes sense and doesn't at the same time that it's such a large complaint. Because the motion controls depended from person to person. Because I know plenty of people who never had problems like me with the motion controls. And I know plenty of people who, for some reason, the game was pretty much broken because of the motion I, controls. I... And I don't understand, like, why... Like, how the motion controls are criticized as, like, a bad game design and a problem with the game when it was very circumstantial. It wasn't, like, the overall game. It just varied from person to person, which I feel like has the potential to account for more of the Wii Motion Plus in itself, depending on the one you have. That doesn't seem like a problem with the game. I want to say this, because before Trevor says something, because he's, like, fidgeting over there real quick, but... Yeah, Trevor, Jesus I, Christ. I, I, I am <laughs> saying this as someone who hasn't played Skyward Sword... And I want to try it out, but the game being linear, linear does not necessarily make it bad. That's how I feel. Yeah, too. I feel like you can't have good linear games. Um, but as for the motion control, I need to play it to get an opinion of that. So yeah, anyway, plus Trevor, they could be, they could be I just, they would, they could be made better. Sorry, I didn't, I that was, I didn't mean to start that over multiple times. They could be made better because it would be a Switch port, and they have much better motion controls with the Switch than they would have had at the Wii and even Wii Motion Plus. Yeah, so, so it has. A, like such a good potential to be re not only remade but to come out doing better than it ever did. Yeah. So uh, excuse me, Trevor, you're having a fucking spaz attack over there. Yes, I just dude? realized Breath of the Wild was an answer. It had the I just had an epiphany right now. That's why I was like, Ooh! Wait, what? I uh, we noticed you were freaking out. No, yeah. like literally, you see like uh, the switch go off in my head. <laughs> switch. <Yeah. But> anyway, <laughs> uh, Breath of the Wild was literally an answer to the linear thing. They did the polar opposite. Yeah, it's open. oh, that's also that actually brings me up to almost more of a debate topic too because 
That's something I've thought about before, too, is that now that we've had Breath of the Wild, which I've never played, that I've seen a lot of I haven't either, but it's on the list of games. Due to how open it is, I don't think people would be too accepting of going back to how Linear Skyward Sword was, unfortunately, even if it was just, like, a port. Yeah. Which is really unfortunate. That's a good point. Like, I... I don't know, dude. I haven't played Breath of the Wild, so I don't have an opinion for firsthand. But from what I what what I've seen, that game is both great and like just kind of bad for the the series of Zelda in its entirety overall. Yeah, because be, it's so it was designed to be as much of it the opposite of a tradition of Zelda game as it could have possibly been, and it did great for that. But at the same time. How different it is hurts anybody trying to actually play an older Zelda game. Yeah, I definitely think that. I mean, it'd be cool, but I think it's the least likely to happen just because of how unpopular the game is. There's yeah. not really a demand for it. Um, that's, did you, a, that's actually one of the reasons why I haven't started it yet because I wanted to experience some of the older Zeldas before I went to Breath of the Wild because I knew if I went went to Breath of the Wild first, I couldn't go back. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, that's a good. That is a good point. Also, like, I um, I feel like people think the older Zelda games are more open than they actually are the handheld games somehow just due to their design are more of the are like some of the more open ones like the 2d ones and top-down ones yeah but like ocarina of time twilight princess twilight princess is my favorite zelda game but even like and even wind waker and skyward sword jesus all the 3d ones pretty much have this problem despite like how like their varying popularity and how some are incredibly popular and how big some of their worlds are there isn't much to really do. There's only, like, a handful of side quests, and most of them don't affect the overall game too much because none of them hold essential things and essential items you can gain from them. There is so it's a, just a big world where you can look around, but you can't really do shit. And then Skyward Sword, for some reason, gets a lot of flack for be not having a lot to do, but at least being linear and focused with its story. There is an exception to that. What? Uh, have you... Majora's Mask, I hear, is actually a game which literally... Like, oh, the, that's... The game is the side Yeah, quest. pretty much. I It's weird because I forgot about Majora's Mask completely, but I think I might... Given what you just said, I think I'm, I might have not mentioned it subconsciously knowing that the focus isn't the main quest in Majora's Mask. In my head, I just somehow knew not to name it, even though I, it didn't even come to mind. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so do you have anything else you want to add about uh, a Skyward Story Master for the Switch? Uh... I don't think so. I just I just wanted to like go on that little rant and just yeah. give, well, give okay. like more yeah. information and insight. No, it's fine. To, like why I feel that the hate towards that game is very unjust. No, it's fine. I completely understand. I I honestly can't have an opinion because I haven't played it, but I will say from what you told me that I don't think a game being linear less necessarily makes it bad. Yeah. So, but but good for your advice too is yeah you already plan on doing this it seems but definitely if you're gonna play the three Zelda games definitely work up to Breath of the Wild. It's really yeah. gonna make going back hard. Yeah, I, I definitely like for those of you who don't know this I have never played a Zelda game and I definitely want to do that. On the channel, which also, to your credit, that also makes more sense now to start with Ocarina of Time. Yeah, that's the first. Yeah, I know I gave you flack for that, but my f giving me giving you flack was also unjustified because it, yeah. it's it's good to work your way up. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say Breath of the Wild is definitely gonna be like the last Zelda game we play on the channel um, because I want to play the other ones first and get an idea of what was so good about the previous ones. But getting off that, finally I can do my turn. Uh, <laughs> the first game I want that I think would be cool to have on the Switch, which is probably the quickest to explain, is a game we already st I already mentioned, Hearthstone. I think Hearthstone would be Dude, good. That would be a really dope Switch yeah. game. I haven't played it, but like, I know, there's just something like really charming up and simple about card games that seem like they'd be great for portability. The, I know they have a mobile Hearth yes. version of Hearthstone, but I think Switch would just probably be more engaging yeah, due to the so, console itself. So the thing with Hearthstone and Blizzard in general is that they have already put games on console before. The only games we know that are on console is uh, Diablo and... Overwatch, but Diablo is the only game on the Switch, or only Blizzard game on the Switch. And um, Hearthstone, I think, would be good for the Switch for two reasons. One, it's already on a mobile device, like your phones, your tablets, so you can put it on a Switch tablet. I think it would be easy. And also, um, like my whole thought process for the like the one benefit of a Switch because it's mobile. It's not only a home console, it's a literally, like, a big-ass portable console you can take with you. Like, my whole thought process on my list was coming up with games that did not need an online uh, requirement. Because, you know, so no multiplayer games are on my list because, you know, you're not always going to be connected to the internet. So I thought, yeah, what, what, would be, really what would be a good game that you could just take your Switch to and play on a long car drive? You know, that was my thought process for my list, and I think Hearthstone would be a good one. 
Uh, Trevor has something I want to bring up. What is it? I, I thought of this, uh, you know, with the Hearthstone thing, what they could do to incentivize people to play that hmm. is they could have some exclusive Switch cards that are, like, That'd Nintendo be related. Awesome. Like, Metroid characters or, like, Zelda characters. That like would the, be really cool, actually. I don't... I, they would have to really, like, make a deal with Nintendo, well, they, and I don't know if they would. they already did... Because Ganondorf is in Diablo 3. He is? Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, oh God, that would be awesome. Yeah. It is awesome, because yeah. it already exists. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh, my God, I just thought of something. When you said Nintendo characters in Hearthstone, that just made me think, what if they make, like, a Smash Bros. card game? That I I think that'd be really... That'd be cool. fucking Dude, awesome. Even, like, I don't dislike card games. I'm just going to make that clear now. I just don't play them because, like, they're too hard for me to get into. The fucking... But, like, they're so cool conceptually, dude. A Nintendo fucking card game would be so dude, cool. Dude, wait. I think they could actually do that. Fucking, like... Okay. Okay. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. The play the playable characters could be, like, the creatures you summon. The Along with the assist trophies, they could make assist trophies uh, creatures you summon, too. The fucking items... Could be like uh, spells from Yuki or whatever that support the character. The b fucking battlefields could be like field spells that affect the gameplay. Oh my god. Can we like make a Smash Bros. card game and people just fundraise it for us? Can we make a Kickstarter for that? That sounds illegal. It probably is. Actually, it's not. Angry Joe has made a couple. Uh, he, I remember, for example, he made a Street Fighters card game. I, you'd have to make. You, we. I think if we could actually, I don't know if we could even fundraise it because just because well, we if you're gonna make it, Nintendo if you make the, it, as you, say, yeah. you need Nintendo's permission, and I think because it's their properties, you wouldn't, you would have to sell it for free. Okay, when, for one of I don't say, know anything about copyright, by the way. That's just from I the think limited knowledge I have. For the record, I want to say when I say card game, I mean like a digital card game, like Hearthstone on the Switch. Like it make us oh, like probably be a lot easier. Yeah, Nintendo, if you're watching this, please make a Smash Bros. card game. It'd be great and make it free to play. A simple idea like, I've had too that like I'm, I, I know other people will have had it but i don't think they thought about the real depth this concept could have i'm sure you've heard the idea of people say before like with mario kart like why don't they just make a smash brothers racing game equivalent and i'm like that's conceptually interesting and would be really cool but why don't they just take the smash brothers format in its entirety and bring it to a lot of other genres instead of limiting it yeah it doesn't i mean you don't have to go crazy i don't really think you need like a smash brothers first person shooter but like a smash yes. brothers racing a racing game <laughs> you're like yeah we need that yeah yes. like, dude like a racing game with smash brothers characters and like maybe each character like there's some sort of special ability or special meter where each character uses a trait unique to them within their game i and like and like not only that but like a smash brothers rpg where you can gather nintendo characters i don't know i know what you're thinking a not garbage version of world of light is what i'm thinking no, okay. an actual that. like thought out in like engaging RPG formula where you can bring Nintendo characters into I saw some first person shooter thing. But, yeah. <laughs> and then, like Dylan said, like a card game. Card game would be cool. The only thing I could see that'd be wrong with that is like it'd be I feel like people would think of that that they're like milking the franchise. Which I don't give a fuck what I don't think okay. <laughs> I don't think I think it'd be cool. I th Dude, I think so. it would be cool, but I just my only worry is that if they're gonna if they ever decide to do that, they need to keep the quality. That's what yeah. Matters. Like I don't think they. I don't even mean like a ton of other genres and and like. Dude, I don't know if it'd be milking it, because like you said, if they put quality into it, it's not going to seem like milking, because it's not going to seem like a cheap cash grab, because it's going to look like a game that a lot of time yeah. and effort and, like, passion was put into. Plus, even if it wasn't, you know, like, there's, I mean, actually, let me not say even if it wasn't, but even if it, like, came out with good quality and there were still, like, some people who just wanted to dislike it because it felt they felt like they were make, uh, milking the franchise even if there was quality put in the games you know like those same type of people are just still gonna buy it and not tell people yeah that's true <laughs> uh trevor have you been you, did you have something you want to say uh two things what one would be my next game but two for, for is still on this first person shooter thing yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay <laughs> all right like, okay, okay. All okay here's the thing i don't know how they would do that because not all the characters have range attacks like how no. would fucking Captain no no no, no 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 i'm not saying i'm saying actually like a, dude if it were, sorry, you go, Trevor. Uh, I'm not saying that it's going to be Nintendo, but I'm saying it's just, a, in general, a first-person shooter game, but it's a mixture of different first-person shooters. Like, there's there's Doom Guy, there is Master Chief, there, oh, there yes. is over, a couple Overwatch characters. Oh, you're talking like... There a, is the Titanfall pilot. Oh, that'd be really that'd be fucking sick. Cool. How fun would that be? That'd be that would that be really would be cool. That's, what, that's literally what popped in my head when you said Super Smash Bros. But that would... I, I Metro, actually, actually, Samus, Metroid Prime... Sh Samus in the yeah that would be cool that too. would be fucking awesome I would like that that someone make a mod of that yeah I, mean, <laughs> I think stop <laughs> looking at your camera or your computer when you talk to the fucking I, this I, is why we need face cam guys come on I I think like how that would go is Nintendo would not at all really be willing to put Samus 
into that game if it was full of that broad characters, but if there was a Switch port of the game, Samus would probably be an exclusive. I yeah, think, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I think yeah, yeah. I think if it was... I think they... they <laughs> I think they could do it, too, if they do, because Microsoft and Nintendo are kind of, like, buddy-buddy now. So I could oh, definitely yeah. see that happening. But anyway, Trevor, what's the next game on your list? Okay, so... Which one do I want to do? Just Let's say do this one. Okay, the Ezio Trilogy. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, for those of you who don't, don't know, they recently announced that Assassin's Creed 3 is getting remastered yes. on the Switch. Yes. Um, and Trevor is kind of biased where he thinks Assassin's Creed 2 is the best one. I personally think Assassin's it's Creed 4. the correct but, answer. I, fuck you. Black Flag <laughs> is better. I like Assassin's Creed 4 Assassin's more. Assassin's Creed 3 is my favorite, but I think 2 and 4 are... Really? Let me finish. Gee, oh, I thought I thought you were... I couldn't... Okay. It's dark in here, so I couldn't tell how you were looking at me. I thought you were looking at me like you were trying to yeah, get... Yeah, it is actually kind of dark. I'm having a hard no, time reading no. my paper. What, what, what I was going to say is, yeah, 3 is my personal favorite, because even though I don't find Connor, like... Too, like super interesting character wise I do get like two people do say he's bland I do feel like he's but also I feel like his kind of monotone person and like stale personality is justified due to like his whole village burning yeah down. he has like that grim yeah that's like characters who usually have tragic backstories like aren't don't sorry I didn't mean to keep tapping my phone don't like don't I feel like <sighs> You, you feel like the criticism isn't necessary? Is that what you're trying yeah, to say? Yeah, not only that, but I I feel like not every character is going to like be super happy in the future. Some people never live down their past traumas in like fictional universe. I mean, even yeah. in real life, but I don't want to get that dark. Actually, yeah. In fictional universes, like, people hold on to that type of stuff. It'd be different if like a single loved one died, but Connor's entire village was burned down. Yeah, so I feel like it's justified that he just is very emotionless and doesn't get invested not in things. Not only that, but you got to... Especially, you, like... Because characters, like, who lose a lot in things, whether it's video games, anime, cartoons, they probably maintain that stale personality because they know they don't want to get attached to things they can lose because they've yeah, experienced you, true you loss. Gotta, you gotta remember, not just his whole village getting burned up, but he tried to save his mother and couldn't and watched her burn alive. Yeah, like, that crushed. too. Like, that's fucked up. Yeah. But yeah, Trevor, you want to say something. What's going on, man? Okay, so I here's guess. the thing about the character thing is people cope with tr trauma in different ways. Yeah, there that's is true, no, too. There is some people who cope with trauma as being... Like, for example, like, Ezio, his personality, mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. least in, be in the beginning, you know, of, like, Assassin's Creed 2, most of Assassin's Creed 2, that's, like, a front. Yeah. yeah. Like, all, like you see how he... Whenever he's with Mario, you know, he <laughs> is himself. He is angry. He is impulsive. He is... I, the I, yeah. I, for some fucking minute, thought, like, Mario from the Mario games. I forgot he has an he uncle named Mario. He even says, it's me! Mario! I know, I forgot. <laughs> because we're talking about Switch... And Nintendo games, I thought, wait, he meant Mario? I was like, oh, wait, no, he has an uncle yeah. named Mario. I what forgot I'm about that. What I'm saying, too, is not every uh, yeah. character who's dealt with some sort of trauma, but then like, there's... needs to be, like, they don't have to be, like, no. dead personality-wise because of that, but, yeah. like, it's justified if they are. I yeah. feel like it's it makes sense to logically portray characters who experience trauma in different ways because that's how people deal with it in real life, and yeah. I feel like that makes the most sense. So when someone does, deals with it by not ever living it down, I feel like they shouldn't be disliked for it. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. I, I agree. I think some people um, give people too much shit for, like, basically being a moody character. Like, for example, Sasuke. A lot of yeah. people don't like Sasuke from Naruto, but I'm saying, like, if your whole family was murdered too, you'd probably be an angry son of yeah. a bitch, all right? Dude, I I'm... love character analysis. Yeah. And, like, I don't know if you... I don't even remember too much of the one I sent you between Naruto and Sasuke. I just remember loving those videos. But there's also, like, a couple different YouTubers I've seen. There's, like, a character analysis on Naruto and, like, why... Uh, why he is a justified underdog and why the, like, misconceptions about people thinking he was handed everything due to uh, Kuruma and all that type of stuff being completely unjustified. Yeah. And that's, like, that's a really good one, too, because there's, it's even, I've seen, like, cases where it's never confirmed within, but, like, by the creators, but just people who, like, know the types of things that happened. Like, it's pretty, I can't say it myself, because I, I don't necessarily see the signs the same way, but from different character analysis I've seen, like, it's pretty, it's clear to the people that, who have made the videos that, they like Naruto and Kakashi like Naruto throughout part, like actually pretty much Naruto's entire childhood up until like he actually develops an entire group of friends and Kakashi during like part one and pretty much actually for a long time like they both had like noticeable clinical depression and they just dealt with it in different ways yeah and like because they were just very like Kakashi was very monotone for the same reason like he didn't he was very faceless and despite being an interesting character he was very obviously expressionless but yeah that was due to like 
his father killing himself because of being outcasted by the village and all that and being yeah. looked down upon by Kakashi and then when Kakashi and Obito died had more depression to deal with and then him and his best friend and his father were dead and like there was just like a ton of trauma with these characters yeah and it and it's the same thing with like Sasuke and Naruto Naruto is like noticeably sad when he's alone or with people he's close to but like overall seems like he's happy but it seems like you can tell he's just kind of swallowing his emotions and trying to not let people see him being too vulnerable yeah and like all three of those characters have dealt with their trauma in vastly different ways yeah that's actually a really good point (laughs) i haven't thought of it that way um trevor you've been wanting to say something what do you want to say something or it amazes me that you you know so much about the characters you have yet to watch shippuden yeah dude like like i said i have seen like dozens of naruto lore videos because i love it and i find it interesting i just despite not seeing like any of Shippuden, which by the way, I'm I'm like episode 18 of Shippuden by now. I finally started oh. watching it. Yeah, I, I finished nice, part one on the. I finally finished the the part one movies. Thank you. I finally finished the part one movies pretty recently, so I've been watching a lot of Shippuden for like the past two or three days. Nice. And I, this. Oh man, we're far past this. But the thing I wanted to say is, I Assassin's Creed Three is my favorite Assassin's Creed game. But <laughs> I, I think objectively, like two and four are the best. Yeah, I gotta say, I, I the only reason I say four is better is because I feel like they had more than what AC two did, you know, in terms of content. Like we had fucking ship battles, dude. Oh yeah, I know. And the stealth was way better in that. Oh yeah, but here's the thing: it was I really like the characters as well as the build. The, uh, the Assassin's Creed 2 better, as well as the ability to just... What's it? How do I say this? Like, you feel him grow as a person. Yeah, yeah I mean, you have I'll give games with him, to be fair. I- I'll give you that, yeah, that's well, I'm true. Saying, I'm talking about just Assassin's Creed 2. Oh, okay. actually, yeah. Also... Yeah, because, like, by the end, the you actually visually see he's older. Yeah, not only that... I'll give like, you that. Timestamps come up after, like, certain chapters in the game, and I'm pretty sure Assassin... I'm not even gonna make up a number, I'm just gonna, like... I'm just gonna say that if you notice the timestamps, Atta- Assassin's Creed 2 takes place, like, throughout the period of over a decade of in-game time. Yeah. Like, they just do a lot of time jumps, but he go. I, I swear I remember, like, doing the math at one point between... I thought it was, like, 20 years. But, yeah, between the beginning of Part 2 and the end of Part 2 before Brotherhood, I'm pretty sure he goes from, like, 17 years old to 40. Somewhere around there. Yeah, that's yeah. actually a really good point. I didn't even notice that. Mm-hmm. Um, but and I think uh, Assassin's Creed, um, what's it called, uh, four is about a ten year span. Yeah, it's yeah, less. I think that's I true. I also just like I like them both a lot, probably equally, but they both have different things. Uh, but I like about them. But I will say that in general, I like playing two more. I feel like because even though there's less to do and like less mechanics due to how early in the series it was i just like the environment more i find italy to be more pretty than even though you have all these tropical islands and all this water once you're on actually off the ship it's just very very small towns and trees that you can yeah I'll, I'll give you this yeah. the, the the buildings and environments in in ac2 felt more fun to like free run around than ac4 oh, yeah. i'll give you that uh anyway but um getting uh, my, getting back on topic my next game is oh wait wait shit i forgot to mention uh for those of you who don't know uh trevor uh, since Trevor just mentioned Ezio Collection on the Switch, uh, the Ezio Collection consists of Assassin's Creed 2, Brotherhood, and Revelations, and is yep. that it? Okay. Um, was there anything else you want to add about that? Um, I really want it, and I hope it, it does come, because Assassin's Creed 3 kind of opened it up, but I'm... Yeah. And I'm like, please give it to me. It opened up the possibility, and I think it'd be cool. For context, to too, like, it, I feel like this is inherently obvious, but despite the titles of the games... The Ezio uh, collection is the entire, tr- like, trilogy and all of the games Ezio was in and the focus of. That's why it's called the Ezio collection. Yeah, I know that was in the title, but when you mentioned, you didn't mention, like, the plot of the series. Okay, yeah, and you just fair. mentioned the titles, which if people don't know who Ezio is or anything about him, like, two Brotherhood and Revelations are as titles are going to sound around. Yeah, that, that's a good point. Okay, thanks for mentioning that. But anyway... Cool. Next, what? What are you saying? It's okay. I just expect them to understand things. I don't feel like explaining it. Yeah, (laughs) no, I hear you. All right, but anyway, you can always count on me to explain things because all I ever fucking do is talk. Yeah. All right, guys, so we're at your little short on time, and we're not going to be able to finish our list of games we want on the Switch, but we will have continue it where we left off in the next podcast. That'll be episode four, so look forward to that, guys. Anyway, back to the show. The next thing we're going to talk about is something Jason mentioned before Tre- before we started, but Trevor um, uh, wasn't here to hear it, so I want Jason to mention it real quick. This is just going to be ideas for games that we think would be cool. Earlier we mentioned um, a Smash Bros. Battle or not Battle Royale, Smash Bros. Uh, card <laughs> game would be cool. 
Um, you mentioned like a Smash Bros. like shooter type game, which would be cool. Um, Jason, earlier you mentioned, I don't think this would ever happen, but a Naruto know. Battle Royale. I don't think that'll ever happen what? either, and I don't like, I don't really like Battle Royale games. I mean, to be fair, that's, that's being mean. I don't like Fortnite. Fuck Fortnite. But no, like, I think yeah. Battle Royales conceptually are interesting, even though the market's oversaturated with them, but this is why I think Naruto would make an interesting premise for a Battle Royale. Mm -hmm. Hear me out, Trevor. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I, um, the way I am the edge it, or, like, the way, when I pitched that idea to my friend, pitch makes it sounds like I'm gonna fucking make the game. The, when I mentioned it to my friend, the yes, way he thought of it, he's like, that's, point too. he was like, that sounds chaotic, and he's like, that sounds like it would be just kind of like the war arc, but I think that would be more chaotic than what I had in mind. What I had in mind would be more like a hundred man forest of death simulator which i would love like, i also i think that would be more interesting because you have a large scale environment but it's not so empty like a typical battle royale you would have like a giant forest or like you could have like different modes i guess you could have like a war mode where things are just really fucking chaotic yeah. and it is like a war arc. plus with but the I think uh the way i see it is more like environments that have more possibilities to hide in obviously you'd have probably have to have some sort of limiter and wall because otherwise people would be hiding the whole game and you'd never find anybody yeah but i think having a giant forest with like a ton of people playing against each other and finding places to hide and roaming around an environment like that would be a cool interesting concept and i think even more interesting obviously you have you have to apply the context of the naruto universe you can't have like guns and shit so i imagine it where you have to when you find someone you can't you can weaken them with like shurikens kunai's uh anything like that like any typical projectiles but you could potentially have jutsu, and like, and you would also need to actually go up to them and melee them for yeah. a kill. Yeah, I was gonna unless you use like something like a fire style. I was yeah, I think it'd be like where you'd have to build up a special ability like in Shinobi Striker. But since that's a MOBA and it's only four versus four in pretty small maps, it wouldn't like work the same. But you'd have to go through and like spend time playing in a single match to be able to build up a special meter. And then when you get a special meter. It does it, it like you would it would do significantly more damage if not one shot people just due to how difficult it would be to, to build. Uh, two <laughs> things I want to say about the Naruto Battle Royale idea. I I don't think it'll happen, but it'd be cool. Uh, one I could just see it being a battle royale where if the op it was like an open valley type area, everyone's just Naruto running. <laughs> two, actually, there's three things I want to say. Two, um, the Force of Death would be cool because that they could utilize the uh, free running or not free running, but the ability to run up trees and yeah, shit. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. That would be essential. You wouldn't really be able to do anything if yes. you couldn't run on. On and objects. three, since there's not guns in Naruto and a lot of battle royales, you have to find guns to fight. They could make it to where you find jutsus and you equip those. That'd be interesting. Yeah. That's similar. That's kind of like how in Shinobi Striker, there are scrolls that your team, get, one member of your team can collect and it'll give you different abilities for your whole team. For example, you can gather a scroll that gives you fast uh, jutsu recharge because yeah. you can get jutsus in that, but they depending on what type of jutsu it is it'll take like different amounts of time to recharge yeah and then a scroll will help it fill faster and then there are some ones where your team will get like regenerating health or lose health more slowly and things like that and i think that concept could be implemented in uh a naruto better round not only that that would also actually really make a lot of sense contextually because i didn't even think about this until now in the forest of death arc they had to collect scrolls and yeah. bring them back to the base oh that's a good point yeah and that's also a one thing that was like the you know how there's like different gu gun uh in battle royales there's like different rarities yeah you have like uh rising gun and shador you'd be like you know, oh like, that'd be cool i think cool, it'd be yeah. cool if like because it's more like, like really kills. sought yeah. after jutsu would be harder to get and regardless of when in the naruto era they're introduced like for example can you imagine if you're running through the forest and somebody just drops a fucking meteor oh Obviously, god it wouldn't be able to <laughs> no. it wouldn't be like let me finish it wouldn't be like a nuke in call of duty it wouldn't destroy the whole landscape it'd be like in the size of shinobi striker because which is probably how it would have to work into this environment it couldn't be incredibly huge the the the, the meteor is only probably estimating in-game distances obviously like 10 feet wide it yeah. doesn't cover a large space but when it drops it put like people are pulled into it because it's more it functions like pains it doesn't function like moderators where he calls meteors from the sky it functions like pains where people the gravity oh, fears, fears cast. Okay. so like like in shinobi striker so whenever you're too you close then you're fucked yeah, yeah whenever you use it in 
uh, Shinobi Striker, people are pulled into the meteor, and then when the meteor drops, they're in it, and that's what kills them. Oh, it that's it, 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 pe People, whoever's in it will die, and whoever the meteor drops on will die also, but it doesn't carve, cover a large space, and if you're not within range, you won't get pulled into the meteor. That's okay. pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that's such a pretty cool idea, but I don't think a Battle Royale, an Naruto Battle Royale would happen. It's just, I honestly feel like Battle Royales are just really oversaturated, and they kind of just yeah. need to like not... Like, I, feel, I like, feel like if you called it something different and then had less players per battle, people wouldn't notice as much. Yeah. But obviously you'd have to have more than a MOBA like Shinobi Striker. Yeah. And you ha you'd have to have every man for himself no, type that's fights. That's a good point. Yeah, they got Tetris Battle Royale yeah, now. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> uh, I've, I've actually heard that's been really doing really well. It, yeah, it has been. Um, getting out of that, though, there's actually uh, two ideas for games that I have that, I've been, that have been in my head and I've been wanting to bring them up on the podcast for a while now. The first one, I'm going to try to explain this as best I can. So, there are these books that are called, like, choose your own story, choose your own path type of books, where it's like, it's like you're reading the story, and at the bottom say, like, hey, do you want to do this or this? Go to this page or go to this page. <laughs> and then you go to that specific page, and the story would be different. Games do something like that, some better than others, where it's a dialogue option, where, like, you know, in Witcher 3 is a good example, because they do that right. You have the, uh, whatever, you pick a dialogue thing, and that'll actually change the path in the story. Like, for an example, um, there's a side quest where you have to help this guy basically purify his his baby but it's dead so he brings it back from the dead and you see like this creepy looking zombie demon come out and you can choose to either help it or kill it and if you help it you have to carry the baby and protect the guy carrying the baby from a bunch of race or if you decide to kill it, you got to fight the demon baby which is so basically the idea is that you know in Witcher the dialogue options you pick change what happens but my idea is a kind of a step further, I, th I feel, and I don't know how it would happen. Um, but imagine if, like, you're playing a game, and you have an objective. And depending on whether you fail or complete that objective, it changes the story as you go forward. So, for example, um, let's say you're fighting a boss, and it's like, in traditional games, you fight a boss, it kills you, you try to fight him again, and then when you beat him, the story continues. What if it's like when you... If the boss Yo, beats you, one shot. Yes, and if the boss beats you, you don't die, but you live to see like how it affects the game, how it affects the world, and you have to, you know, it affects your character because you feel responsible of like, man, I did not beat this guy, and now people are suffering for it. Or another idea I had is like, there's a horde of enemies trying to break through a gate, and you have to defend the gate. If you lose and you don't defend the gate everyone in the village dies and you are held accountable or if you win then they're fine sounds like you basically want detroit become human except for it's playable fully no uh, yes but not exactly detroit become human it could be like i was thinking more of like an action rpg genre that's what i'm saying but yeah i just think it'd be a cool idea whereas instead of uh it being a dialogue option it's you are actually punished for defeat and therefore your character feels defeated and then you play that share that kind of experience. That would be really cool. I think it would be cool I'm too. I'm surprised that hasn't been utilized yet because so many games do like dialogue option formulas yeah. and I'm surprised a game hasn't like, I think I've seen some games do it but it's not on the grand scale of the entire game where like do it, something happening and like losing a fight will affect the game but like that hasn't been utilized to the potential you're you're explaining it at and that would be really cool to see yeah it hasn't been done yet but i think the reason it has is because it would take a long time to develop and i don't even yeah. know if they could do it what's up trevor here's the thing though about you're saying about logging some dialogue options they have this thing called the illusion of choice yeah them, that's true where yeah. basically it seems like for example here's uh one thing that um that i'm gonna like here's one example that's an analogy that isn't exactly it actually it's another thing of illusion of choice but it's not video game related mm-hmm so I'm going to tell you, okay, so you want, do you want to get, take a bath now or do you want to take a bath later? My, the, the illusion of choice is you choose when you get to take the bath. The point is I'm going to make sure you're taking goddamn bath. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a good point. I've seen that in done in games where, like, all, I, I think the, the term that I just thought of immediately when you said that was all roads lead to the same place. And, like, ha have you guys ever seen Doki Doki Literature Club? No, but I'm going to play no. that, so don't spoil it. All right, shit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm, shit. I'm surprised <laughs> nothing's been spoiled for you yet, it but I'll stop. I will stop right where I am. Then. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sure people watch it can figure out where you're going to go. Um, but uh, one last idea for a game that I wanted to mention, and I can't take credit for this because I saw someone post this on Twitter. I don't remember who it was, so I apologize for this, but hear me out. A fighting game where it's all characters from Cartoon Network versus characters from Nickelodeon. <laughs> that would be fucking oh, awesome. Man. That would have to have some 
like real passion and quality put into it because the fighting on bad games 10. I've seen, the fight <laughs> what gives on Ben Ten. Oh fuck you! I will kick. You. I will. Dude, no, Ben Ten's like. I will like, kick your ass with Curse of Cali Dog. So I don't give a before, shit. <laughs> before I started my Naruto retrospective, I was doing a, a Ben Ten retrospective, and for some reason, I stopped in the middle of it. And I am probably not gonna lie, going to restart it. But I watched everything from the first episode of Ben Ten all the way to like the middle of um, Ultimate Alien, and like. So I, I was pl like I said I was planning on watching that entire franchise. I watched all the movies up until before Ultimate Alien too. Nice Metal live action. Yep. Yeah. Dude, I, I count movies in my retrospectives, but like, but just not like games or anything. Not ex stuff that's too extended. But yeah. So I I no fuck you. You don't get Ben Ten. <laughs> that was the point <laughs> of my story. <laughs> uh, Whoever picks him first wins. <laughs> I, I just think like that would be cool. Like. I could see, like, maybe if Patrick from Spongebob was in, in that type of game. His his ultimate, he just attacks you, but he yells, My name's not Rick! <laughs> That'd be fucking That'd funny. Be awesome. But oh. yeah, I think that would be cool. Um, Alright, guys, well, that's gonna be it for this episode of the Take a Break Gaming Podcast. I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, we did kind of go off topic a lot, but like I said, this is unscripted, and we just kind of just have fun with it. So, yeah, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Um, uh, did you enjoy this? Are you excited for the new Pokemon game? Do you think our choices for the games that could be on the Switch are good? Do you have any games you think would be good on the Switch? Um, oh, yeah, which is better, Fire-type or Line-type? Say Fire-types, you son of a bitches. And we will see you all in the next episode. Have a good one, guys. Bye. Dark-type better. Bye. Shut the fuck up, Trevor! <laughs> <laughs>